Wine and Crime contains graphic and explicit content that may not be suitable for some listeners. Listener discretion is advised. Election Day is November 6th, so before we start the show, we just want to encourage you, if you have not done so already, to register to vote! Woo, 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 yes! Woo, 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 woo. Save democracy! It is, your, it is your civic duty, and there are deadlines for voting registrations, so, and they do vary state by state. So, go to USA.gov right now, look up your state, figure out when your deadline is, and register. And then don't forget to get your butt to the polls on November 6th. You can also sign up to get an absentee ballot if you can't make it that day. So mm-hmm. whatever you yep. got to do, it's easy if you know how to get that information. So USA.gov, do it. Treat yo country. Trade it. You are listening to Wine and Crime, the podcast where three friends chug wine, chat true crime, and unleash their worst Minnesotan accents. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I am Kenyon. I'm Lucy. And I'm Amanda. And this week we have a very special fan pick episode. Um, it is brought to you by Raylan Shoop. 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 <laughs> She's <laughs> never gotten that before, for never. sure. Never. Whatever. <laughs> um, Shoop up. Well, we did the best job of anyone Duh. making that same joke. So, um, Raylan has selected a fascinating topic: Craigslist crimes. Yeah. I <laughs> love this episode. <laughs> yeah. So good. I do too. I mm-hmm. went way down the rabbit hole. I kept mine short because we got several texts from you about how far down the rabbit hole you'd gone <laughs> yep. and knew what was to transpire. We had what, to make coming. room. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't feel that bad because Raylan also selected my case. So Perfect. I feel like I'm I'm giving them a, a really good run for their money. Yes, and, um, I love it. It's also like a really crazy case. But before we get to it, Amanda... What is our wine crime pairing for Craigslist crimes? Yes, I have selected the Ruza Zinfandel Rosé from <laughs> Wink Wine Club. Like, Ruza. Ruza, like, like a, a ruse. ruse. Yeah, like the ruse of a fake Craigslist ad to lure you into a death trap. Anyway, mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. this is from <laughs> Wink Wine Club, which if you are new to our show, welcome Wink Mm -hmm. is one of our amazing sponsors. They are an online wine club that literally delivers wine to your doorstep. Yep. It's amazing. So you can head to their website. Yes. Their website, trywink.com forward slash gals for $20 off your first order. Again, that's trywink.com, T-R-Y-W-I-N-C.com forward slash gals, G-A-L-S, for 20 bucks off your first order. So when you get to their website, they have a huge, huge arsenal of wines that you can choose from. You could also opt to, to take a flavor quiz. If you're kind of new to wine, this can help you pick out things that uh, would be perfect for your palate. Um, but I love it. It's small batches from all over the world. Lots of wine from California. So we've been doing our part in light of the California forest fires to mm-hmm. really put some some energy back into that wine economy. <clears throat> it's our but civic duty. It is our civic duty. And when you put four or more bottles, again, four or more, as many as you want, bottles mm-hmm. into your cart, Way they more take care of the shipping. Four. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so you could get eight bottles. You could get 12 bottles. You could get 25 bottles. Let's just keep saying numbers of bottles that you could get. because that's 692. Yeah. There you go. Odd or even. As mm. long as it's more than four, four or more, they take care of the shipping. And if you take a peek at our website, you can get an idea of what Wink wines are going to be coming up so you can make like a little wine and crime box. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um, speaking of being lured into a Craigslist death trap, quick anecdote. Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> I have a good friend who you've both met, John. John H. We won't say his yes. last name. I yes. like him. And I like he's him passively listening right now. I don't know. But if you are, God love you. 
-hmm. But we met because I moved to upstate New York after high school and I didn't have any friends and I actually like auditioned some local gays via uh, (laughs) MySpace to be my new best friend. And uh, John answered a quick questionnaire that I had created myself. He (laughs) gave the best answers and we became friends and I did not, I didn't know him at all. He gave me his num- phone number. I went to his house and picked him up. We hung out for the that. day. And I remember my sister calling the house while I was gone and talking to my mom and Ashley being like, where's Amanda? And mom being like, I don't know. She's out meeting some friends she made on the internet. And this was <laughs> right when the Craigslist killer of Boston was like mm-hmm. this huge story. And my sister was living in Boston at the time. And she freaked out that my mom would just let me go meet some stranger off the internet. But all these years later, John and I are still friends. He's come to Minneapolis yeah, to visit he's us. Come he to went Lucy's to Baudette. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I'm just to saying. Canada together. Yeah. So it if could... he's a killer, he's playing the long game. Long he's con. not. I'm just saying there are a lot of great <laughs> people you can meet on the internet who aren't going to kill you. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Ruza Zinfandel Rosé. this is a light bodied rosé with a lot of minerality which i really really love in a white or rosé um it balances out some of that sweetness which can come with rosé but this one's really nice because again it does have that minerality but it also has notes of strawberry and watermelon so it's like that end of summer you know beginning of of fall like last minute heat wave this is the kind of wine that i would want to be drinking during that exact time can you just picture it i've gotten this wine in my wink box before and it is so good (laughs) it's so good i love it It, and again it has that strawberry and that watermelon but it's not sweet it's not sweet like a white zinfandel it finishes bone dry it's super crisp i love Mm. it And uh, this bottle was actually made as like a little project to quote make white zin cool again. And quite frankly, I'm super on board if this is how it's <laughs> going to be because it's this wine is delicious, and I can't wait to drink it again because I have also had it before. Yes, Lucy Yo. is going to be taking the reins on our pap this week. I'm popping. I'm popping over here. <laughs> and if you would like to pop along at home, after you join Wink, you should head over to whiningcrimepodcast.bigcartel.com and order yourself a nice pop winged wine opener, bottle opener, winged mm-hmm. opener. Cork That's screw. what I'm using right now. Corkscrew. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'll never For remember being that the word. wine person, <laughs> I know. Fuck it up every week. Again, I'm used to saying wine key. I never use a corkscrew. Wine screw. Wine screw. <laughs> Metal object that could kill a man or open your wine or beer. Which Looks is like, like a happy a perfect person combo. with yeah, a, with, with the a, arms up spirally mm-hmm. dick and it says mm. nice pap it's super cute you guys it is it's super so cute. cute i totally sold it with my last comment <laughs> are we ready yeah mm-hmm. all right she's in pushing okay. the arms down oh it's like butter like mm. butter all right <laughs> it's gonna be worse than kenyan i gotta stand up you guys <laughs> Ooh. She's tight. <laughs> oh, there we was go. That it? Beer yeah, it, it slid out. Oh. It slid out kind of, kind of easily once I got the right uh, angle. You know, silky pie. Oh, oh. oh. <laughs> my god, that was sensual. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Cheers, ladies. Woo-hoo. Cheers. <laughs> Proud of you. As you're pouring, Lucy. I feel like I need a cigarette. (laughs) (laughs) I just hit my teeth on my microphone. (laughs) Um, What is is our background and psych for (laughs) Craigslist crimes? Well, I did a little history of Craigslist itself. Yes. And uh, went into some popular crimes committed Mm -hmm. via Craigslist. I'm ready for this. So I'm sure most listeners know what Craigslist is, but for those who might not, it is an American-based website that hosts classifieds, advertisements, and personal forums, with missed Mm -hmm. connections being my favorite. 
the best, yes. but didn't they get rid of it? They did. We'll get to that. But I wanted oh. to point out quick anecdote that Corey was on a Miss Connections one time. <gasps> what? Somebody, somebody like reached out to him. Yeah. Like, hey, you were wearing yeah. the blah, blah, blah shirt. And- yep. Yep. It was when we first started dating. So I wasn't like, you know, fiery. You were drinking black velvet <laughs> and a Colt 45. <laughs> black velvet and a little boy smile. <laughs> <laughs> I just listened to that on Spotify yesterday. I was like, what? How? What algorithm decide? I yeah, okay, song. I like it. Adding this to my playlist. I know. Loved it. It okay, is on I like a it. Spotify you know playlist. Added, added. Permanently. Um, anyway, no, it, it was like, I saw you at the OP on the hill, and you had a tattoo on your front arm, and you were with your your boyfriends, and I was with my girlfriends, and I couldn't stop looking over at you, and... And I what? caught you smiling at me, and Corey showed me. The way me you it. farted got me so <laughs> hot. The way you slammed your pints of PBR really just did it for me. Mm. <laughs> he showed me the thing, and he's like, yeah, I totally remember this chick. There was like a table of sorority girls. They just kept looking over at his table with all of his boyfriends. And they were like, well, let's get our check. <laughs> 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 they really were like significantly it. younger than him. Creeped he was out. like, this is weird. <laughs> Getting out of here. Don't need this in my life. But on I like, my permanent record. <laughs> I feel famous because he was in a missed connections from Cedar yeah. Falls. <laughs> Duh. Duh. Okay, so Craigslist.com was started by a man named Craig Newmark. Mm. What if his name was like Derek? Craig List. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. List. <laughs> Craig S. List. <laughs> so like, I just stupid. meant it to be my personal website, but yeah, here we are. It just off. took off. <laughs> We're so dumb. Okay, it was started by Craig S. List in 1995 (laughs) (laughs) as an email distribution list among his friends, like kind of like a list serve, Mm -hmm. um, to tell people about local events in the San Francisco area that generally revolved around things that would interest software and internet developers, aka nerds. Nerd alert. (laughs) Um, Then it began to spread like wildfire. Wildfire. Mm -hmm. People started using it to communicate about job opportunities and resume sharing. And so Mm -hmm. Craig S. List added a jobs category (laughs) to his list. (laughs) And because it's the Internet, people began asking him to add other categories as well. Well, Mm -hmm. this email list can only handle so much. So in 1996, Mm -hmm. it moved to a web-based platform Mm. and expanded into categories like auto, volunteering, furniture, antiques, real estate, boat parts, oh etc. Body parts, boat et and body parts. Boat parts is its own category. I can't. All do right. That. I have bought weird shit off of Craigslist, y'all. Mm-hmm. Craigslist free used to be my favorite, and yes. I would have like absolute dreams of renting a U-Haul and planning a Minnesota road trip around just the free <laughs> things on Craigslist that I could go pick up. Uh, this You're summer, you mean? A hoarder. That's what I'm saying. We got to die. Yeah. Well, let's just factor it into our East Coast tour. Great. Okay. At the beginning of November, if you haven't we gotten have so your tickets. We have so much time <laughs> to do that. You got- for the East Coast tour, you guys, I will be flying in two and a half weeks. I will be flying from Johannesburg to New York, then traveling from New York to D.C., D.C. to Boston, Boston to D.C., D.C. to New York, New York to Johannesburg. No, <laughs> no, uh-uh. no, yep. I can't. That sucks for you. I was really efficient with my time. I still have flashback nightmares about traveling to and from Johannesburg. I've literally had like six nightmares. I'll never since recover. Then. I will never <laughs> yeah. recover. That well, Amanda was like, oops, left my wallet there. We got to go back. <laughs> <laughs> I got to do it five times a year. Okay. <laughs> uh, move back. Yep. 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 Uh, okay. So boat parts, etc. 
Craigslist became Craig's full-time job in 1999. Yay, entrepreneurialism. Nice. Mm -hmm. We feel you, Craig S. List. Mm -hmm. Mr. List. Mr. List. (laughs) Today, there are Craigslists in 70 countries, and the site serves more than 20 billion page views per month, putting it in 72nd place overall among websites around the world. And ironically, wow. I Googled what's the most visited website in the world. <laughs> it's Google. And... <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, yeah, I, have, I have a prediction. <laughs> oh, my God. And wineandcrimepodcast.com is, second. is number yeah, <laughs> one trillion. <laughs> Um, in 2012, a Swedish online marketplace company cropped up called JamesList.com oh, boo. and was promptly a sued. Cousin. <laughs> it's Craig's cousin, James. But it wasn't even like James's list. And I know that people are James split list. on whether to just add an apostrophe or an apostrophe S on names that end with an S. I'm mm-hmm. sure you have an opinion on this. I think add an S. So I this would be JMS side. list. I'm apostrophe no S. Yep. Really? Mm-hmm. I distinctly <laughs> remember. Disdain. Really? In my <laughs> um, Sunday, like, children's group when, like, the adults were at church. And then the children would, like, go into the back and have, like, a remedial Make sacrifices. lesson. Yep. <laughs> you know, when, children's when lesson, joined. Sunday school. And my one question that I remember was whether Jesus's would have an apostrophe S or just an apostrophe. I was mm. in like second grade. You found your Telling. calling early. Telling. <laughs> they did not have a good answer for me. And that's when I stopped being a Catholic. <laughs> <laughs> and that's when I lost all faith in the Almighty. <laughs> it's true. Okay. Yeah. Let's talk about the personal ads because it's the best part and presumably where many of these criminal cases come from. And a really good movie starring Madonna. Oh, yeah. Remember? Desperately Seeking Susan. Oh, right. Okay, Mm -hmm. so once it was widely established, Craigslist became a popular dating site in particular for the gay community in more conservative areas. Doi. Free grinder. grinder. Mm -hmm. In 2005, a syphilis outbreak was tied to sexual encounters from the San Francisco Men Seeking Men section. Yeah, whatever. I bet different syphilis outbreaks were tied to different bars in town as well. Oh, I know. This is just like the first sketchy, widespread thing that stemmed from this. So the San Francisco Department of Public Health put pressure on Craigslist to do something about its practices. This was back in, what did I say, 2005? Sure. Um, But CEO Jim Buckmaster, hello, Buckmaster's list. He was on that Men Seeking Men page. Buckmaster. Oh, Buckmaster, no. (laughs) Stagmaster. Uh, Buckmaster put out a statement that people, quote, must police themselves, but they mm-hmm. did add links to clinics and STD forums in some of these sections after that. So, like, fair like that's fair, fair enough. enough. Yeah. Yeah. In 2002, a disclaimer was put on the men seeking men, casual encounters, erotic services, and rants and raves boards to ensure that those who clicked on these sections were over the age of 18 but no disclaimer was put on the men seeking women women seeking men or women seeking women boards Mm. bizarre interesting very strange Uh, fucking patriarchy is what that is yeah Yeah. we're only interested in protecting the dong Mm -hmm. As a response to charges of discrimination and negative stereotyping, Buckmaster explained that the company's policy is a is a response to user feedback requesting the warning on the more sexually explicit sections, Mm -hmm. including men seeking men. So today, all of the above listed boards, as well as some others, have that disclaimer. Okay, But basically, they were like, well, women seeking women, eh. Men seeking women. Eh. Yeah. Okay. 
Um, on March 22nd, 2018, Craigslist discontinued its personal section in the United States in response to the passing of the Stop Enabling Sex Traffickers Act, or SESTA, mm-hmm. which sounds which is- like a pharmaceutical that helps you sleep. It totally it's, does. Yeah. Sesta. Try Loon Sesta. <laughs> Talk to your doctor about Sesta. Side effects yeah. may include syphilis. <laughs> not for those who are pregnant, nursing. Nursing. <laughs> or maybe come pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not safe for those on SSRIs. <laughs> Okay, so SESTA Um, removes safe harbors for interactive services knowingly involved in illegal sex trafficking and allows for criminal culpability of companies that do so. It's also super, super duper controversial um, amongst pro-sex work and pro-legalization and pro-decriminalization yeah, groups. It's, we like don't have time to get into it. It's a very controversial law. And all I'm going to say is that there, people who sell sex don't all have the same needs, issues. Motivations. Motivations, uh, you know, whatever. And mm-hmm. so... There are aspects of SESTA that protect some groups while harming other groups, and not having SESTA protects some groups and harms other groups. Mm -hmm. So there isn't one law around selling sex or exchanging goods and services for sex that is going to make all different parties happy. Yep. Heard. Yeah. Okay. Moving on. Um, so some other criticisms that Craigslist has been linked to include, oh my God, what did I even write? Oh, (laughs) I don't know. Some (laughs) other criticisms that Craigslist has been linked to include, okay, this is the danger of ending a clause with a preposition. Just saying. Oh my God. (laughs) Just read the fucking sentence. (laughs) Include encouraging dog overbreeding. Okay. Mm Mm-hmm. Killing off the newspaper. Okay. Blame millennials. Blame, yeah. Craig, right. blame Craig S. List. Blame Craig S. Craig List. S. List. <laughs> um, hit men for hire and fraud. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So those are some popular ones. According to a fastcompany.com article, in 2010, there were 330 crimes linked to Craigslist. So breaking those down. In wow. one year? Included, yeah. Ooh, that that's low, considering how many users there are. Well, yes. Just listen to the breakdown, though. It's kind of intense. Um, Twelve murders, including one man in Edgewood, Washington, who was killed by home invaders after he posted an ad selling a diamond ring. Oh, Damn. of course. 31 assaults, including a couple in Philadelphia who were assaulted at gunpoint in their home after posting an ad selling an SUV. So Mm -hmm. we're seeing a trend here. Yeah, shit. 72 robberies, including more than a half dozen victims in Northern California who had their cars stolen after meeting with a quote unquote potential buyer. Yeah, nope. I have bought a car off of Craigslist. So have I. And sold a car off of Craigslist. I've never sold a car on Craigslist, but I have bought a car on Craigslist. I feel like if you're with at least one other person and you're meeting in a public open area, Mm -hmm. that's kind of as safe as you can make it. I always bring a friend. Always. Mm -hmm. Um, There were 52 sex work incidents, and I'm... You know, there have to have been so many more, but these were just reported or prosecuted or whatever. And then 161 others, which include um, men seeing seeking sexual encounters with underage girls. Oh, lovely. Those types of things. If you're the kind of idiot who is seeking out. Basically, sexual encounters, uh, sexual encounters with underage girls on Craigslist. You may as well put a giant sign on your front door that says, am a pedophile, come in and arrest. Because yeah. Like, yeah. 60 Craigslist minutes. Is, it's not the here. deep web. Yeah. Like anyone can look at this. 
you're mm-hmm. a moron. That's like, yeah. let's go on Facebook and update my status. I like little boys. Come arrest me. Yeah. Like, what mm-hmm. the fuck? You're yeah. a moron. Mm-hmm. 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 Uh, I think that there is a range of people who use Craigslist. Some are horrible, violent pedophiles, and some are just curious seeing if there was maybe a missed connection put out there for some them. Some just want to get a car. Some <laughs> just want to find some free firewood or, you know, yeah. yeah some just want a f- shitty 1990 BMW with the car phone attached. Want to rent a U-Haul and Specific. make a road trip picking up free shit all around the country. Yeah, that's all. Have, have I told my uh, Craigslist apartment catfishing eviction story on the podcast <sighs> yet? Probably. No, but how long is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Um, the listeners are going to want to hear it. So they? <laughs> my friend was looking for an apartment for us when we were in New York and we all had summer internships. So we were all dirt poor, unpaid internships, whatever. And he is Middle Eastern. And so he wasn't getting callbacks when he was reaching out to all these people about various summer sublets. And so he asked me to help him. Like, he would identify the apartments. I would talk to the landlords on the phone, and we would get, like, an interview or or a viewing of the apartment because I am American and racism is very real. And um, so he picked out an apartment. I chatted with the guy on the phone. The guy was like, okay. Yeah, his name is Dash. He was a male model, the, the landlord. <laughs> and he was like, great, you guys can have it. It was an okay price. It was in Brooklyn. We were like, great. We moved in uh, with two other friends, all of us doing our summer internships. And about a month in, one morning when we were all getting ready to leave for work, we got a knock on the door. And I opened the door, and there was a it woman It was Dash. There. No. <laughs> <laughs> we also we of course had paid up front for the entire summer because we were naive and dumb i was 19 um this woman was at the door and she was like hi and i was like hello can i help it was like 8 a.m like can i help you and she was like yes what are you doing in my apartment? Wait, you had keys and everything? Oh, my God. We lived there. We had lived there for a month. Oh, wow. <laughs> you <laughs> had groceries in the fridge. Yeah, we <laughs> fucking lived there. And she was like, what are you doing in my apartment? And I was like, pardon? Yeah. And I told her the story, and she knew Dash. Dash was her friend that she had asked to keep an eye on her place while she was out of town. Oh, no. And he sublet it. Without Let her me guess, knowledge. He dashed. And he fucking dashed with all of our <laughs> money to take a modeling gig in, like, I don't even know, Dubai or something. He was what out of turn. the country. <laughs> and the woman, I was like, okay, well, you know, like, I, I couldn't confirm who she was, so I asked to see some ID, and she very pleasantly, as someone was standing in her apartment, waited in the hallway and showed me her driver's license, which matched the name on all the mail we'd been receiving oh and just, like, setting God. aside. <laughs> And I was like, oh, my God. So then she very, like, calmly agreed to leave because she had – she was in a relationship so she could go to her fiancé's apartment. And She's then, like, super chill about this. This is the I nicest lady. I would have been calling out. the cops. Yeah. Well, I think she – because I said dash, I think she realized that her quote-unquote friend – You both friend, got screwed. Yeah. Had had fucked everyone over, so she was like, "I'm gonna call Dash. I will be back later." And I was like, "Okay, like we have all of our earthly possessions in this apartment, and we right. all have to go to work now." So, I'm afraid. there's that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So we didn't hear anything for a few days, and then we just got like another knock on the door, and she was back with the sheriff. Oh, my God. (laughs) To evict everyone. And I was already gone because my summer internship ended early. So I was already back in Minnesota. So I just got a phone call from my friend who was like, we're getting evicted. Like, sorry, bye. (laughs) (laughs) Wish I could help. 
<laughs> I was back in Minnesota that sucks teaching for you. sailing. That super yeah. sucks. Have a great summer, hags. <laughs> half half guys. <laughs> um, no, but then uh, Dash's sugar daddy. Yeah, sugar dashy. S- Just a dash will do you. Have a dash Sugar, right. da- sugar have dashy. Have a dash right. This this like older gay man with like a massive apartment in Manhattan like reached out and was like, "Hey, I heard what Dash did. He's such a scoundrel. You guys can like come finish out the summer at my place." And they were all so broke um, that they all said yes and went and lived at Dash's sugar daddy's apartment for a this month. This is so uh, bonkers. I can't. Yep. Yep. So that happened. So don't rent an apartment off of Craigslist. If you find yourself in a similar situation, <laughs> you might need to speak with a therapist. And like, Talkspace can do that for you. Sure can. <laughs> Talk Talkspace. Talkspace. <laughs> is an online therapy company that makes it easy, affordable, and convenient to connect you with a licensed therapist so they are not going to catfish you. (laughs) (laughs) They are not going to take your money and dash. Oh, I see what you did there. That was cute. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Talkspace is amazing. It takes all the stress out of going to therapy because you don't have to go to therapy. You can reach into your pocket to talk to your therapist whenever the moment strikes you. Mm -hmm. They have their office hours within which they will respond to you, but you can access them every single day. My therapist, Emily, typically responds to me every day, even over the weekend, which is amazing. Um, Every therapist is going to have their own style, but you can really, really find somebody that's going to work right just for you. Mm-hmm. I think it's great. I think it helps keep you on track too. If like your therapist gives you strategies or, or coping mechanisms and things like that to work on. Um, mm-hmm. It's nice being able to check in briefly every day instead of like making an appointment and then, Oh, you know, I'm not going to see you again for a week or two weeks or even a month. Instead you can be right, like, Oh, right. I tried this yesterday. I'm trying it again today. I'm going to try it again tomorrow. Thanks so much. You know, like keeps you on track. Mm -hmm. love it we all use it we all love it it's just nice to have somebody in your pocket ready to if not respond right away because they do have office hours um but it you can just type out all your feelings all of your emotions you can go back Mm -hmm. to previous conversations that you've had with them if you just need to get something off your chest or get a little a couple moments of support then they're there for you uh you know text voice call video call whatever yeah. Mm-hmm. So. so for $45 off your first month, go to Talkspace.com forward slash gals, G-A-L-S. And again, $45 off your first month. It's way Crazy more affordable deal. than traditional therapy. Go to Talkspace. Mm-hmm. Treat your, your brain. brain. And now a word from another sponsor. Casper is a sleep brand that makes expertly designed products to help you get your best rest one night at a time. Casper products are cleverly designed to mimic human curves, Mm -hmm. providing supportive comfort for all kinds of bodies. Human bodies. Did you know that you spend one-third of your life sleeping? Or in some cases, (laughs) two-thirds? (laughs) <laughs> three thirds i'm essentially a sloth yep. <laughs> so yep. no matter how much you sleep you should be comfortable mm-hmm. and casper does deliver that the casper's breathable design helps you sleep cool and regulates your body temperature throughout the night even mm. if you are sleeping with a human oven mm-hmm. as some of us are named Ca- your husband Corey. <laughs> it's just something about you know the circulation it's just hot it's so mm-hmm. hot mm-hmm. so hot uh casper offers two other mattresses uh there's the wave and the essential yes and the wave features a patent pending premium support system to mirror the natural shape of your body love mm. it the essential has a streamlined design at a price that won't keep you up at night. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Amazing. Um, <laughs> and it's delivered right to your door in a small, 
how do they do that? What is this sorcery? Actual box? magic. Actual yeah. magic. <laughs> and one of my favorite parts is that there's free shipping and returns in the U.S. and Canada. Nice. Amazing. Love it. And you can get $50 towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com forward slash gals and using promo code gals at checkout. Terms and conditions do apply. And again, that's 50 bucks towards select mattresses by visiting casper.com forward slash gals. That's C A S P E R dot com forward slash G A L S and using promo code gals at checkout. Terms and conditions apply. Woo! Treat your sleeping bod. Treat it. <laughs> Mimic your human bod. Mi treat your human <laughs> curves. I am human man. <laughs> your robotic right angles. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, my super long case. I'm going to try to talk fast. It uh, was a fan pick. I'm getting and out my coloring sheet. <laughs> yeah. Get out your wine because it is dark. Okay. Ooh, I'm okay. here for it. So, the Craigslist job ad posted in October 2011 seemed pretty legit. Quote It always does. Mm, caretaker position for farm, Southern Ohio. No. Nope. Robert Picton. <laughs> Oh, that Canadian. was Canada. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever. Okay. <clears throat> Simply watch over a 688-acre uh, patch of hilly farmland and feed a few cows. You get 300 a week and a nice two-bedroom trailer. Someone older and single preferred, but oh we'll my consider God. all... Yeah. <laughs> Did Real I write this ad? <laughs> <laughs> you you get three Southern a week, Ohio. <laughs> feed a few cows. It's not <laughs> a lot to ask. Amanda's got a weird catfishing <laughs> strategy <laughs> and a vivid um, imagination. She does. <laughs> um, relocation a must. You must have a clean record and be trustworthy. This is a permanent position. The farm is used mainly as a hunting preserve. Oh, uh -oh. Is, no. Is no. Over, <laughs> it's overrun with game. Has a stocked three-acre pond. Some beef cattle will be kept. Nearest neighbor is a mile away. Nope. The place, nope. <laughs> the place is secluded and beautiful. No, nope, nope, This nope. ad is literally come here so I can murder you. <laughs> dot com. Yeah. It will be a real getaway for the right person. Job of a lifetime. The last job you'll ever have. No. Um, oh, my God. If you, if you are ready to relocate, please contact ASAP. Position will not stay open. Include name, age, phone number, and email, please. No. All right. One man, 58-year-old ex-Navy member and injured construction worker Ron Sanson, uh, answered the ad and met its poster, a burly man with a scraggly beard. Of course. At a mall. <laughs> yeah. There are lots of photos. Um, at a mall food court for an informal interview, but Ron did not get the job. Sanson would only later realize what a blessing in disguise this was. Was oh, he not Lord. like a dress size 10? Is that why he what didn't get it? What does she like a size 10? Well, I think it was because <laughs> like he had been in the Navy. Person. Oh. And so he could kind of like take care of himself. Maybe. Oh, wait. Or was like too fit, maybe. <laughs> he had too many survival skills. His skin was too dry, and he didn't like lotion. Um, it rubs the lotion <laughs> on its skin, or else it gets the hose again. <laughs> oh, no. I'd fuck All right. Me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Other men wouldn't be so lucky. The men who answered the Craigslist post had mostly been, quote, thrown hard against the rocks of bad fortune. Rode hard oh, and put away no. wet. <laughs> that is descriptive, and I will yeah. be using that regularly from now on. Yep. Yep. Thrown hard against what? The rocks of bad fortune? <laughs> yeah. Yep. That yep. is amazing. <laughs> Thank I'm putting you, that on my Times. Tinder profile. <laughs> <laughs> my um, Twitter bio. <laughs> 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 
Master, Cat bad Lover, forge. thrown hard, hard against, against the rocks, the rocks of bad, bad forge. <laughs> <laughs> so they were out of work. Their marriages were ended. Uh, their youth was gone. All their of youth, the possibilities yeah. of their oh, lives no. behind them. <laughs> Can relate. Relatable yeah, okay. content. I'm there right now. So 48-year-old Scott Davis, who also answered the call for the caretaker position, fit this description. He and the poster, a middle-aged, blue-collar guy he knew simply as Jack, had been emailing back and forth discussing the position and Davis's background. Mm-hmm. Davis had recently moved back to Ohio to help take care of his aging mother, He'd left behind his landscaping business, but it was 2011, so the recession was still, like, in full swing, and I got the sense that the landscaping business had seen better days. Ah, okay. Um, and also, he had left a failed relationship in South Carolina. So he's 48, just had a breakup, business isn't doing well, recession. Supple skin. He's got the Supple job. Supple skin. Um, he'd brought along uh, his prized Harley Davidson motorcycle, and Jack suggested that he bring it with him to the farm because there were, quote, plenty of beautiful rural roads to putt putt in. Okay. <laughs> Only homicidal maniacs use the word putt putt. Putt putt. I know. So Come on, on November 6th, <laughs> November 6th, 2011, should have been voting. Um, uh, Scott Davis met Jack and a 16-year-old boy he introduced as his nephew at a Shoney's family restaurant in Marietta, Ohio. Already hate it. Okay. <laughs> Leaving his own vehicle with trailer hitched to the back, and the trailer had his motorcycle in it and all of his, like, possessions. Yeah. Um, he left that behind in the parking lot, and Davis rode with... Jack and the teenager in their white Buick LeSabre out to the farm. Okay. Davis would later tell police that the car ride was normal, conversation was easy, Jack was like a really chatty guy. Um, and it was only once they reached the heavily wooded property located at the end of a long dirt road with absolutely no cell phone service. Oh Uh-oh. my God. No. Nope. My- Ultimate nightmare. <laughs> a heavily wooded area with no cell phone service. Oh I my hate god. This. I hate In a this. white Buick LeSabre. Oh, uh, that's not how I want to die. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that Davis began to feel uneasy. Oh, okay. Jack told his nephew to pull over where we got that deer that last time. Oh, no. Uh-oh. No. He he said he needed to retrieve some equipment that he'd left down the hill off the road. Sure he did. Davis got out of the car to help his supposed new employer. He wanted to make a good impression, right? The two men walked down the hill while the teenager stayed in the car, but there was no equipment. Jack then said he must have been confused and they should go back to the car. This must not be the spot. So Davis turned around, and now Jack was standing behind him. Jack and is the da- kid, right? No, the kid's in the car. Jack is the scraggly the ass. Guy. Oh, oh, no, okay. yeah, Jack's the murderer. Okay. Jack's the murderer. Jack is the guy who posted the ad. Gotcha. And he's calling himself Jack. <coughs> okay. So Davis turns around, and now Jack is standing behind him. And then Davis hears the click of a gun being cocked. Oh, uh, most horrifying sound ever. Ew. And he says that in that moment, it all became clear to him. They pulled over where they got that deer that last time. <gasps> and he, he the was the deer. Oh, uh. my God. <sighs> Doesn't that just yeah. give you chills? Yeah, I hate this so much. Davis spun around, and the first shot, the gun jammed, which gave Davis time to deflect the second shot with his right elbow. Ugh. Yeah, so his elbow was, Ouch. like, blown to bits. Um, 
He took off running deeper into the woods, you know, running for his life, and the shots continued to ring out behind him, but the guy didn't seem to be pursuing on foot because he's a burly, fat, middle-aged man. Right. Motherfucker. Um... Despite losing a tremendous amount of blood from the elbow wound, uh, Davis hid in the woods for hours until he felt safe enough to walk back up to the road and seek help because he didn't know if these two guys were going to be waiting for him. Waiting for him, yeah. 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 Poor bastard. Um, And he was terrified of running into them. So eventually he decides it's... It's been long enough. He hasn't heard any noises. He's going to walk up to the road and and try to get help because he's bleeding a lot. He finds a house along the road and rings the doorbell. The people at home were watching Jeopardy in their living room. Sounds right. And a kid comes to the door and then is like, Mom, Dad, there's a guy bleeding all over the front porch. Yeah. (laughs) "Ah." (laughs) This is an actual horror movie. Yep. So then the family inside calls 911. But when the police arrived, Davis's story confused them. What 688-acre cattle farm was he talking about? Oh, my God. Because nothing like that existed in the area. No. In fact, all the nearby land was just scrub brush owned by a mining company. I can't. So it was a hundred percent fabricated. Yep. Okay, we're gonna go a little bit out of chronological order here, but it makes the narrative more exciting. So, <laughs> okay, Vic- victim number two. You are the worst. <laughs> I'm just working on my coloring sheet. That will be mm-hmm. some lucky recipient's trash queen. Prize. Yes, 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 yes. <laughs> All right. David Polly was fifty was a fifty one year old divorced dude, temporary living uh, in his older brother's spare room in Virginia, mm-hmm. when he answered the seemingly idyllic Craigslist job posting. Idyllic. Mm-hmm. It's my worst nightmare. Serene. <laughs> mm-hmm. Polly had quit his job managing a warehouse back in two thousand three and had bounced from job to job ever since. But his best friend had previously moved out to Ohio from Virginia after his his divorce, and he was doing really well. So Polly got the idea that he could do the same, move out to Ohio, be near his best friend, start over. Aww. Yep. When he found out he'd gotten the job, he was ecstatic. It felt like a turning point, an answer Aww. to all his prayers. Sad. Sad. Mm-hmm. David Polly rented a U-Haul, packed up his NASCAR memorabilia and model trains. That is Aww. an actual fact. Oh, my Lord. Um, and drove out to Ohio. He promised his best friend, and they were very close. These two, they they bought these, like, special long-distance walkie-talkies, which, like... Oh, my God. They started a podcast. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I want these walkie-talkies. I like I, them. Yeah. And his trains. I know. So they had these walkie-talkies, and they talked to each other, like, constantly, like, all day. Like, not for hours and stuff, but basically, like, texting, but they're 51-year-old It's like our WhatsApp. Right. Yeah, yeah, it's our WhatsApp, oh. 100%. Yeah. Uh, so they talked to each other dozens of times a day. And uh, the friend was like, "Okay, man, like, good luck. Let me know how. Let me know how like the meeting goes with your new boss. And like, so happy you've moved to Ohio. And like, let's hang out on Saturday. Oh, okay. No. But days went by after this meeting, and Polly's friend heard nothing. It was very unusual for him to not talk to his friend. Yeah." So he grew concerned and called the number that Polly had given him for this Jack guy. Jack reassured him that uh, Polly was just busy working on the farm. Couldn't couldn't chat. Too busy. Too many Mm, chores. Yeah, so busy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then a few more days went by. They were speaking? He spoke to him? He spoke to Jack on the phone, and Jack was like, yep. He's here. 
Just working. Oh, yep. Jack. Okay. Oh, God. And it's key that they had walkie-talkies because, yeah, there was no cell phone service, but Jack couldn't even use that as an excuse. Be mm-hmm. like, oh, he's here on the farm, no cell service. Like, he'll he'll call you when he can. Yeah, that but, doesn't apply when you have military-grade yeah. walkie-talkies with your best friend. Right. Oh, no. Um, so then he calls back a few days later and is like, yeah, still haven't heard from him. This is really weird. We were supposed to meet up on Saturday, whatever. And this time Jack changes his story, saying that Polly had packed up and left the farm suddenly and decided he didn't want the job after all and that he was going to follow some other guy and take some other job. Nope. Nope. He would have called mm-hmm. his best friend to gossip yep. about Jack before that yep. ever happened. This is not yep. Yep. the truth. Yep. So the friend didn't buy it for a second. Good job, Con- friend. Yep. Contacted uh, David Polly's twin sister, with whom his, he'd also been close. So David Polly was close with his friend and close with his own twin sister. Um, she also hadn't heard from her brother in weeks, which was very unusual. And she had already started to do some digging of her own. Which is like, yes, Queen. Kenyon. Yeah. She's <laughs> pulling a full on Kenyon. <laughs> yep. Yeah, exactly. Um, She's found photos of the interior of Jack's father's home. Yep. yep. Of, of the supposed double wide trailer. <laughs> um, she stumbled upon a disturbing newspaper headline from the Ohio town where she knew her brother had gone off to. Ooh. And the title was, Man Says He Was Lured Here for Work, Then Shot. Ooh. Oh, but God. Oh, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Yeah. It's Davis. Yeah, the guy who got away. Yes. Yeah. So she, so she sees this headline, knew that her brother had gone there for work and then disappeared. So she immediately calls the town's sheriff. Yes, queen. Yes, queen. Yes, queen. Yes, queen. Yes, queen. Yes, queen. Yes. <laughs> yeah. This is why you have to tell friends and family where you're going. Yep. And so who they can you're rescue you. With. Yeah. Yep. Always have best friends walkie talkies. Hundred percent. Yes. Oh, we need to invest in some. Okay. I don't know if they'll work cross continentally. We will get. Money is no option here. Okay. <laughs> okay. So the we police will buy had- a satellite. <laughs> the wine and crime satellite. I'm texting Elon Musk right now. <laughs> Old Elon. Such my a creep. Homie. Such a fucking He's creep. He's my weed okay. guy. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> okay. The police had been investigating Davis's story. The guy who escaped. But not all that urgently. So they were Mm. kind of looking into it, but they hadn't really called in the big guns because it just seemed, like, too bizarre. Yeah. Um, But then they get this phone call from a concerned family member of another missing man fitting the same profile as the guy who escaped. Oh, my God. And they were like, shit, maybe this is a thing. Maybe this is a serial killer we should actually work on this. So they bring in an FBI cyber crimes specialist to track down the IP address of the guy who posted the Craigslist ad. Yes, IP queen. Yes. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> they also get a crew of cadaver dogs to search the area where Davis had been shot. I love cadaver dogs. Yes, Can cadaver we queen. Yes, yes, puppies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> this is like queer eye, but for crime. <laughs> yes, yes. Never queer help. crimes yes. for the straight. Puppies. I want crimes. Jonathan on our show so, so bad. So da- hair crimes. He's so hair crimes. Funny. Hair follicle crimes. Follicle oh crimes. <laughs> I love him. <laughs> All right, let's actually it's reach out. Happening. <laughs> Follicle crimes. <laughs> <laughs> Follicle forensics. Yes, forensic okay. follicles. Oh, man. Okay. okay. So, after a few hours with the dogs out there, they discovered a patch of disturbed soil covered with tree branches. Mm. And it didn't take a lot of digging before a sock covered foot. Began to stick <gasps> out of the ground. <coughs> yes. Oh, I hate socks so much. 
I really do. I I can't. I'm sorry. Was it like a men's ankle sock? Oh. Probably. Oh <laughs> god. And it's like socks yellow. Just crusty sting. Zach, oh, he wears socks. them until they like shred and fall off yes, of his foot. Yes, men and their yeah. socks, they are foul and disgusting <laughs> and they should not, they should be eradicated. <laughs> and they're <laughs> everywhere. They're everywhere. Yeah. everywhere. Oh, it's so gross. Just okay. rain crusty socks. Ugh. Ugh. Okay. The body uh, was dumped face down in a hand dug grave. It bore a black leather bracelet with a silver clasp, and they called Polly's twin sister and were like, hey, any chance your brother wore a bracelet? And she was like, no. is it a black leather bracelet with a silver clasp? And they were like, oh, yes. No. And she's like, fuck. Yeah. That is so sad. Poor Polly. I know. Investigators also discovered another freshly dug grave nearby, but this one was left empty. Which begged the question, had this been meant for Scott Davis? Oh, my totally. God. Totally. Turtly. Death was. Mm -hmm. For sharks. Mm -hmm. For sharks. <laughs> Turtly for sharks. <laughs> uh, <laughs> marine so, crimes. We're totally doing a marine crimes episode. We're totally for sharks doing a marine crimes episode. <laughs> Crab absolutely. Well, you, guys, you guys are crayfish. <laughs> <laughs> We're absolutely crayfish right now. Yeah. <laughs> you guys are crayfish. <laughs> All right. The FBI. Lo lobster. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry. Oh my God. Don't make me clam up. Okay. <laughs> the FBI, meanwhile, <laughs> had traced the IP address to a house in Akron. It's Akron, Ohio, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, 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 um, yep, 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 yep. <laughs> but when they arrived, the house's owner insisted he'd never posted on Craigslist before in his life and didn't mm. know anyone named Jack. And he seemed legit. They were like, okay, this guy he seems like he's... He didn't know Jack. He didn't <laughs> know Jack. <laughs> LOL. So then investigators show him security camera footage of the man known as Jack meeting Scott Davis at the restaurant. And the house owner was like, oh, I know that guy. He just told me his name was Ralph. Oh, my God. And this Craig guy, S. Ralph. List. <laughs> James S. List. Um, <laughs> Ralph James Craig <laughs> S. List. <laughs> so the man that he knew as Ralph Geiger had what? rented a room from him recently for $100 a week. And then this is what he had to say about Ralph. Quote, real nice guy. He didn't cuss, didn't smoke, didn't drink. First Sunday he was there, he went to church. I don't give a fuck. He's or a murderer. He went out to kill a person or two. Right, but also, like, Maybe. I drink, I cuss, I don't go to church. I also don't fucking kill people. Yeah, correct. Like, it's meaningless. It's always Whatever. the people who don't swear. Right? Yep. They've got too much deep Them goody down. two shoes. Mm -hmm. You're depraved. Fucking goody two shoes. You're depraved. Mm -hmm. All right. You're so cray invest fish. <laughs> Investigators <laughs> track down Ralph, and a SWAT team comes and arrests him, but his name wasn't Jack, and it wasn't Ralph. Oh, was Greg. Either. It's Craig. In yes, fact, yes. police would later discover that Ralph Geiger or Geiger was the name of this dude's first victim. <gasps> Ew. Stop. He's just assuming their identities like a yeah. fucking creep. It was like what? a skin suit scenario. Hate yeah. It. Hate, so, it. Hate it. Hate it. He's like, his so, real name is Creed Bratton. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I can't scuba, what has all this been about? <laughs> what have I been working toward? Craig thoughts. Okay. <laughs> The man was actually 53-year-old evil Santa, Richard <gasps> Beasley. 
Richard Beasley? Like Pam yeah. Beasley? Oh, no. Mm -hmm. What do you mean Pam's evil Santa? Father. Can we go to the drive? Look at photos. Go to the drive. Yes. <laughs> He's All I want to do is look whoa. at pictures on the Google Drive. Total evil, evil Santa. Santa. Where is he? Yeah. He's the evil Santa looking motherfucker. Oh, right. There Oh There's God! So, oh so my many God. photos of him. Wow! These will be on the blog, y'all. That is, is a scowl. Yeah. Yeah. He that is, is a upside down parentheses. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. He's nasty. <laughs> He's um, so nasty. I hate him. All right. Oh, since some... we're on the drive, that first photo is a picture of Craig S. List. Oh, look at how cute he is. With his He's little hat. Adorable. Okay, so a little bit about Beasley. Fellow church members, and he was always a churchgoer. Yeah, he looks like one. Uh, recall Beasley's unusual attire. He wore cowboy boots and a large belt buckle, which was uncommon for Ohio. A um, little too flashy for us Midwesterners. Mm -hmm. um, some were shocked by the horrifying revelations, but one member of Beasley's Bible study group told reporters, we overlooked things. Oh, um, my God. Signals. We uh -oh. overlooked signals. They were there. Like what? Blood on his boots? Who knows? That's all they said. I'm, like, dying to know what the signals were. Yeah, I want to know Dang. what the signals are, too, but yeah. I guess we'll never know. Okay. So Beasley was divorced. He had one daughter. I think she was grown or she was a, like in her late teens at least. Um, he had a long criminal record. He had served time for burglary and firearms offenses in the past. Oh, great. And he was currently facing charges for promotion of prostitution and selling OxyContin. But he went to church and he mm -hmm. didn't cuss. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Not to mention violating parole. But so, he went to church. And, and he, he didn't, didn't cuss. cuss. And he didn't drink. Because he was on probation. Because <laughs> he just sold Oxycontin instead. Because <laughs> he liked the harder stuff. <laughs> oh, my um, Lord. So a warrant was already out for this guy's arrest, which made it easier for them to be like, yeah, we're taking you. Um, uh, yeah, bye. Here we go. <laughs> um, Don't hit your he head. <laughs> he'd also fashioned himself something of a street preacher. Oh, Jesus. I hate this man. Uh, he <laughs> is yeah. the worst kind yeah. of person. Just wait. Oh, so God. many called him Chaplain Rich. Ugh. Ick. And he founded a so-called ministry slash halfway house in a rougher part of Akron. Ick. Um, and would cruise the streets at night for runaways, survival sex workers, and drug addicts in need of Christ. Oh, my God. He's disgusting. I hate him so much. I'm guessing the majority of people he saved were women. Well... Rather than helping these folks in need at his so-called halfway house, Beasley instead became their pimp. Yeah, of course he did. Yeah, this is where I thought this was going. Advertising for sex work on none other than Craigslist. Great. What a fucking gross piece of garbage. Yeah, he kept I hate the women. Him. Yeah, he's disgusting. <laughs> He kept the women docile by um, feeding them drugs, which he also sold. Classic. And Beasley claims that he had no personal sexual motives behind any of this because he told reporters that he hadn't been able to have sex since he'd been injured in a car accident about a decade prior. And lost I can my, lost my penis in a car accident <laughs> ten years ago. <laughs> But I go to church and I don't I cuss. Don't cuss. <laughs> <laughs> and I sell oxy. Lost my penis, but I don't cuss. I don't he fuck, but I don't cuss neither. <laughs> he, 
He said, quote, I had a steel coffee cup in my lap when it happened. You can't oh use my what you don't God. have. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. And I just want to be clear. We would not be making fun of someone who just happened to be in a horrible accident. Of course and not. But this guy's a piece of shit. So yeah, this coffee cup piece. cut his dick off. I'm fine with that. Yeah. Right. Have exactly. you guys seen... This guy's there's, a monster. Corey made me watch this last night. It's horrible. There's like a montage of RoboCop shooting off like a hundred different guys' dicks. <laughs> it's so egregious. And it's not Ew. even a part of a RoboCop movie. Like some people went out of their way to stage this entire <laughs> really dramatic it. three minute montage of him just shooting off a hundred dicks. <laughs> Ew. Google the it. internet is amazing. <laughs> um, da, da, da. When it came to this Craigslist con with the dudes, um, like the job posting, Beasley never bothered responding to female applicants. So he wasn't mm. trying to get any women out there to kill. It was only Maybe men. too easy. I don't know. Instead, Beasley carefully crafted his Craigslist ad to, quote, conjure a very particular male fantasy. The cowboy or rancher out in open country, herding cattle, mending fences, hunting game, living a dream that could transform a post-recession drifter into a timeless American icon. He is so delusional. This is a fantasy for himself or for the guys he was trying to hire to hunt down. He made the postings appeal to these middle-aged, loner, Uh, drifter, hard, hard on their luck guys and made them think they could turn their lives around by, like, living this sort of cowboy, idyllic, Pastoral. throwback yeah lifestyle okay so and he so he like planned it and they found in beasley's house uh all different drafts of what the ad was going to say oh where he like God. played with different language Yikes. and arrived at this very particular language for this ad um he was drawn to the desperate those who betrayed their excitement and vulnerability in their replies to him. So, for example, one applicant, a man named George, passed the first round of screening at, for being an ideal victim when he replied, quote, I'm still in good shape and not afraid of hard work. I really hope you can give me a chance. No. If for some re- I know. If for some reason I wouldn't work out for you, no hard feelings at all. I would stick with you until you found help. Thank you very much, George. Honey, no. Oh, Georgie. I know, but it's okay. This one's okay because ultimately George was not selected because he later mentioned that he'd once been a security guard and was proficient in martial arts. Oh, so it's like uh, you don't want him to fight back too much. Yeah. Right. So he th- George thought this would be a good thing because he'd have to, like, protect the farm and guard the property. But he said as soon as he mentioned that, the mood of the interview changed and Beasley just, like, got up and walked out. Yep. Sounds about right. Wow. Yep. All right. He has two other victims. Oh, my God. Jesus. I know. Are you going to get to who the fuck that 16-year-old is? Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. His first victim, we mentioned Ralph Geiger or Geiger. I'm going to say Geiger. Um, He was the first victim. He was shot and killed on August 9th, 2011. He was found naked in a shallow grave covered in lime. So what's interesting is that there were three murdered victims, and each of them, the burial got more and more lazy. Oh. Like, as time went on. So the first victim, they, they cut his clothes off of him. They buried him in a deeper grave. They covered the, gra- covered the body in lime. They, like, properly reburied it. By the third guy, it was, like, a really shallow grave and, like, clothes still on, identifying shit still on, and, like, some branches thrown over him. Wow. Okay. So it's just, like, meh. 
Yeah. Just getting more and more careless uh, with disposing of the bodies. And then Beasley, like we said, stole this first victim's identity and, like, used his driver's license to rent rooms and even fill prescriptions at a pharmacy. That's so eerie. I hate it. Mm -hmm. And then the third victim was this guy named Timothy Kern. Um, He had worked as a Domino's pizza delivery driver, but recently had had to quit because his car, um, in which he was also living at this point, uh, kept breaking down, and he couldn't afford to get it fixed. Hello? Mm-hmm. Can't. Um, so he couldn't keep his job, which didn't pay enough to get his car fixed because he needed his car for his job. God. Which I feel like... I mean, All I too common. Yeah, like I haven't been in his shoes per se, but like... That's the reality of living on the edge like that, which I feel like yep. wealthy people and like comfortable middle class people don't realize is like one little thing goes wrong and you have it's no all safety gone. net. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so his car wasn't working. He had to lose his job at Domino's. He was really desperate. Um, he also had three kids whom he loved dearly. And he'd always tried to help support in better times. Um, But at this point, he was, like, totally flat broke and I think even had to borrow some money from his teenage son. Um, After answering the Craigslist job ad, Kern visited his ex-wife, which he still had a good relationship with her and their kids. He picked up an old TV set to bring with him to this, to his new home in the trailer. Um... And because his car was broken down, he had his son drive him to the first interview. And Jack said that the way that he would recognize him was that he'd be wearing a red hat with a flag on it. Okay. Which, this is 2011, so it's pre-Trump, but it's still very, like... Mm-hmm. It's so fucking Trumpian, this yeah. disgusting man preying on desperate... People down yeah. on their luck, yeah. middle aged white rural men who just want to do some hard work to get out of their current situation and they're gonna be fucking shot in the back of the head in the middle of the mm-hmm. woods. This guy basically yeah. is Trump. This is a great analogy yeah. for our current political climate. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. save the coal industry. Just kidding, I'm gonna kill you and leave <laughs> yeah. you in a shallow mm-hmm. grave. Yikes. I'm gonna take your health care and I'm gonna increase tariffs on farms and mm-hmm. you're fucked. Mm-hmm. And I'm Bye. gonna lower taxes for the rich. Okay, so after Tim uh, got the job, quote, a few days later, he had another friend drop him off at a local mall. He had all of his earthly possessions with him, and he was going to be picked up by Jack and taken to the farm to start work. He literally, like, had all of his belongings in garbage bags and was, like, ready to start his new life. Poor guy. (laughs) Jesus. I know. I know. so sad. When they reached the wooded area, Beasley told Kern that he'd lost his watch while hunting squirrels in this spot the other day. Oh, no, this hunting shit again. Mm -hmm. And would you mind helping me look for it down the hill? Was that kid with him again this time? Same deal where the kid drove and then Beasley would be like, hey, pull over here. I need to go look for something real quick. And then the kid would stay in the car and Beasley and the guy would would walk down this little embankment and then he would attack him. I need to know who this kid is. We're going to find out. Yeah. So Timothy Kern's body would later be found with the help of cadaver dogs in a hand dug grave. He had been shot in the head multiple times. And he had to be identified by his dentures, which had oh his name imprinted God. on them. Holy shit. Oh, I fucking Jesus. told you it was dark, y'all. Okay. Last bit. Sort of. Beasley's <laughs> accomplice. Here we go. Here we go. Brogan now we're in it. Rafferty. Now we're in it. Oh, God. His, his name is That's Brogan. A name. Uh, was just 16 at the time of the murders. And he wasn't actually Beasley's nephew, which they had told all their victims. But he did look up to the older man uh, who was a family friend, and they'd always been close. 
So Beasley had brought Brogan to church with him ever since the kid was nine years old. And in many ways, he was kind of like a stand-in father slash best friend to this boy. Mm. Um, And Brogan's home life was a little bit troubled. His dad was like an ex-biker and sort of a disciplinarian. Like, sounds like he was like pretty tough and like they couldn't really connect emotionally. Um, and his mother was addicted to crack. Mm. And so even though they had a close relationship, she just couldn't be relied on to be an adequate mother. Mm -hmm. Um, so Beasley had kind of stepped in basically and helped raise this kid. And, uh, yeah, he was a high school junior at this point. Uh, he was six foot five and still growing. Ugh. Wow, holy crap. So he was massive, this kid. He'd always That's been a big, big old for boy. his age. He's a big boy. <laughs> um, and he was the perfect worker bee for Richard Beasley because Beasley was not a fan of manual labor. No. And so Brogan was there to do all the, like, dirty work besides the killing. Like, Beasley got to, like, have the thrill of the hunt, and then Brogan got to, like, do all the other shit. So fucking gross. Um, So all those hand-dug graves, that was Brogan. Um, This poor, vulnerable kid, too. He's he's so many victims in this story. I mean, to varying degrees, but Yeah, Beasley is really gross. Like, really knows how to find... Manipulate people. Yeah. Yeah. It's really fucked up. Um, Brogan also, he kind of gives off like, um, what's what's the case out of Wisconsin? Making a murderer. The, the boy. Oh, Brendan Dassey. He's sort of like a Brendan Dassey, but not, um, not low IQ. Mm-hmm. He's just eager to sense? please. He's just very quiet, a bit of a loner. You know, he seems like good hearted, even though he's out there helping this guy kill people. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Um, so he's very quiet. Some people said that he was practically a mute. Like that is how quiet he was. Um, but he, after the arrests, he did give... Uh, lengthy confessions to investigators and and helped put Beasley away. So Brogan was tried as an adult, which is common apparently in Ohio for serious crimes. And um, he was convicted of three counts of aggravated murder and sentenced to life in prison with no chance of parole. Wow. 16 years old. Oh, wow. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, we don't really have time, but Fucking there are freak photos. Santa ruined his life. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Uh, all because they had bonded over going to church. Ugh. Like, Brogan was such a good kid, despite his, like, troubled home life, that when he rarely got in trouble, his punishment was that he wouldn't be allowed to go to church. Oh. Yeah, I wouldn't know anything about being that good. <laughs> <laughs> Churches Um, crumble around Amanda. They do. (laughs) They sizzle. Um, (laughs) So there's, we don't have time, but on the blog and on the drive, there's a bunch of like artwork and poetry that Brogan has created since being in prison. So you can check that out on your own time. Mm -hmm. Um, At trial, Richard Beasley inexplicably showed up in a wheelchair uh, which, oh, by God. all accounts, he had never needed before. What a cool. fucking prick. So he's just a fucking manipulative bastard. Um, in 2013, Beasley was sentenced to death, and I think by now he has exhausted all of his appeals, so at some point that death sentence will be carried out. Um, one last little tidbit. This is a description of Richard Beasley from a GQ article. But oh, it was God. So, it was so fucking good that I had to share it. So, quote, his hand is an old overboiled ham hock that, <laughs> that envelops mine in a shake. Ooh. 
and an untrimmed mustache that covers the absence of front teeth and works as a kind of flap oh, behind, <laughs> behind which bites of microwave cheeseburger disappear. I uh, can't. <laughs> it's so descriptive. That I can smell this made, man. Oh, don't say smell. Don't say the word smell. It's multi-sensory. It is. I can An picture it so well. An overboiled ham hock. It's yeah. making me, oh God, it's making me feel sick. <laughs> it's making yeah. me feel sick. So that's Richard Beasley, and thank you, Raylan Shoup, for recommending or su- picking this case. Holy fucking Yikes, shit. Raylan. Yikes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Girl. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I hate Girl. it. <laughs> yeah. I hate it. He's I- awful. Oh. Well. Yeah. On that note. <laughs> a word from our sponsor. <laughs> An oh. overboiled ham hock. <laughs> Yikes. And a flap behind which <gasps> pieces of microwave <laughs> cheeseburger disappear. The microwave <laughs> cheeseburger part is the best part. It works as a kind of flap. <laughs> I, I, I hate it so much. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. 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 All right. Shake it off. Well, shake it off. Okay. Shake it off. And now, <laughs> a word from, from our, our sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> and now, a word from our sponsor. Family care needs can be unpredictable. Uh, you can get sick kids. You can have to pick up a parent after an operation. Maybe you have to take your pet on an emergency visit to the vet. All of these are things that happen to families all the time. You gotta deal with it. And sometimes you just need an extra set of hands on demand. So, care.com. Care.com is the world's largest digital marketplace for finding and managing family care. At care.com, you can find care for everyone in the family, whether you need childcare while you're at work, or want to line up a date night sitter. Oh, yeah. Uh, um, Get it. Care.com is there for you. You can find sitters, nannies, housekeepers, dog walkers, senior care, tutors, errand runners, and more. Full-time, part-time, anytime. Using Care.com makes life simpler for families everywhere. And at Care.com, you can find, book, and pay for care all in one place. It's so convenient. Mm -hmm. Care.com makes it easy to take care of all your household employer obligations, including nanny taxes, with Care.com Home Pay. And Care.com provides access to a variety of background check options that you can purchase to help you make the best hiring decision. Yes. So join for free as a basic member and start searching for great local caregivers. Once you upgrade to premium membership, you can reach out to them, schedule interviews, and even book and pay for care online or through the app, which is so cool. So I joined care.com and just plugged in my zip code, and then I could see all of these people. Like I was looking for a housekeeper, specifically Mm -hmm. somebody to come (laughs) Clean all my windows and screens. It is my least yes. favorite thing in the universe. Mm-hmm. So um, I had all these applicants kind of reach out to me. I could see their qualifications. I could talk to them, you know, picked one that was right for me. It was just extraordinarily easy. So mm-hmm. I loved it. It was convenient. Very easy to pay them as well. So I would definitely recommend it. And you have the premium membership, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I do. Uh, so to save 30% off a Care.com premium membership, visit care.com forward slash gals when you subscribe. Again, you can save 30% off of a Care.com premium membership by visiting care.com, C-A-R-E dot com forward slash G-A-L-S when you subscribe. Treat your window screens. Mm-hmm. Treat your life. Treat your, yeah, treat your life. Yeah. Mm. Treat your free time. And now a word from our other sponsor. 
Zola, the wedding company that will do anything for love, is reinventing the wedding planning and registry experience to make the happiest moment in couples' lives even happier. From engagement to wedding and decorating your first home, Zola is there, combining compassionate customer service with modern tools and technology, all in the service of love. Mm. Zola truly takes the stress out of wedding planning with free wedding websites. I used one. I selected the... um, Bird of Paradise theme. It was very so, so cool. pretty. Mm-hmm. It was. Um, they also do save the dates and invitations. Uh, you can get a wedding registry and free, easy to use wedding planning tools. They also have over 100 beautiful save the date and invitation designs, and there is one for every wedding style and color scheme. These are so on trend, you guys. Mm-hmm. It's amazing. Um, There's also a free guest list manager. This was a lifesaver for us. Um, You add your guests to Zola's tool, and they'll help you collect missing addresses, format those addresses, which is really key, and track RSVPs. Mm -hmm. So key. uh, When you're planning a wedding, that is so key. You will not believe how many people fail to RSVP and well, you have with to your wedding being, gently nudge <laughs> and with your wedding being overseas this is so convenient and and so much more streamlined for you to, mm-hmm. to use mm-hmm. yeah like we you couldn't have sent online. paper invitations really from where you live no we couldn't they would never have arrived so we did mm-hmm. digital invitations and we did the Zola wedding website and we added all kinds of extra info there for guests on the wedding website so people were coming were traveling so we were like okay these are the best airlines this is how you rent a car this Amazing. is how your phone will work in this country it was really helpful I think it was a great reference you can also match your save the dates and invitations to a free wedding website as Kenyon was saying And if you register at Zola, your Zola registry automatically integrates into your Zola wedding website. So convenient. Mm -hmm. So that guests can get all of the details they need and buy you a wedding gift in one convenient and beautiful place. So cool. Mm Mm-hmm. The Zola store has the widest selection of gifts, all different prices, 500 top brands, including KitchenAid, Cuisinart, Sonos, Airbnb, so -hmm. much cool stuff. Yeah, and all you can like you group want. gift and get you can put money toward a honeymoon and all kinds of cool stuff too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So sign up at Zola.com forward slash gals to get 30% off your save the dates and invitations order. That is a huge deal. Again, that is signing up at Zola.com, Z-O-L-A dot com forward slash gals, G-A-L-S, to get 30% off your save the dates and invitations order. Run, don't walk, treat yo wedding. Yeah. Treat yo nuptials. Treat yo (laughs) nuptials. Incredible. And now a word from our other sponsor. ModCloth believes every outfit is an opportunity to express yourself. Inspired by vintage style and informed by today's sensibilities, they offer a curated wardrobe that lets you do just that. ModCloth is dedicated to serving their amazing community by celebrating your stories and offering a full range of sizes. Mm. So you can find a variety of looks in a full size range from extra, extra small to 4X. That is Mm. a massive range. It is so helpful. And if you have a question about fit, their team of mod stylists can hook you up with complimentary sizing and styling help. And if you're like me, counting down the days to Halloween. Yes, yes. I love their Halloween stuff. <laughs> it's like 42 days, by the way. Uh, <laughs> Mod Cloth has something to suit each and every ghoul. <laughs> Nab everything from cat, yes, and bat prints to polished dresses. You can wear well past the witching hour high. Oh, cat Halloween God. outfits are for year round. Yeah, Mod like Cloth gets agree. us, you guys. They mm-hmm. really do. Um, I have been ordering from Mod Cloth for years now, as we've mentioned before. I even got a bunch of bridesmaid dresses over the past couple of years, including the one for Lucy's wedding off of Mod Cloth. So cute. I absolutely love this website. They also have a catalog that's really cool that I get delivered to my house because the website just isn't enough for me. I um, love their catalog. That's their where catalog they showcase really a lot of the different models and their stories and mm-hmm. things. It's so cool. I love that. But one of my favorite features of the website is that after you purchase something, you can upload a a photo of yourself wearing it 
to the website. So when you go and you look at a specific item, you can kind of go down into the comments. People can talk about the touch and feel of the fabric, how everything fit. They can put an actual photo of themselves wearing the outfit so that you can see body types that really look like yours wearing the clothes that you're ordering online. I have never had to actually make a return, but I have had to exchange things through Mod Cloth just for a different size. They make it so easy, so simple. Everything arrives so quickly. Uh, I can't say enough great things about this website. I absolutely love Mod Cloth. So to get 15% off your purchase of $100 or more, go to modcloth.com and enter code GALS at checkout. This offer is valid for one-time use only and expires on December 8th, 2018. Again, you get 15% off your purchase of $100 or more by going to modcloth.com, M-O-D-C-L-O-T-H.com, and enter code G-A-L-S at checkout. Again, this offer is valid for one-time use only and expires on December 8th, 2018. So hurry. Use it. Claude your bod with mod. <laughs> Get those Halloween cat prints that you could wear year-round. Oh my god, my cart is full. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, my case is shorter than Kenyon's. Mm. And then we will finish it out with a Facebook request after this episode <laughs> was announced. There was oh, a right. very, very, very enthusiastic request that we read a, a dramatic Facebook advertisement on the Craigslist air, so. ad. Oh, okay. sorry. Craigslist ad that was posted to Facebook by a listener. Amazing. So first, we're going to talk about this case, um, which is actually out of Minnesota. Yes. Ooh. I know, but it's not good. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> Catherine Ann Olson was a 24-year-old theater and Spanish studies graduate of St. Olaf College right here in Minnesota. Oh, oh. Dreaming of travel with special interest in visiting Madrid sometime that year. This was in 2007. Catherine took to Craigslist to find jobs in her wheelhouse, which was nannying for young children in the Minneapolis metro and surrounding suburbs. Mm -hmm. She there. was also, yeah, I know, right? She was also interested in potentially working as an interpreter, but ultimately decided that that wasn't the career move for her and picked up these nannying gigs to sustain her while she sorted out her next move, which, like, mm -hmm. I so hear you, girl, mm -hmm. taking those mm -hmm. odd jobs. Mm -hmm. Quote, Catherine was unfortunately too trusting, said her father, oh. Reverend Rolf Olson. Oh, oh no. my God, they're so Minnesotan. Her they father are the is most Reverend Minnesotan. Rolf Olson. Is it E-N Olson? No, it's Owen. Oh. The proper spelling son of old <laughs> she had found benefits on craigslist but in her trusting nature she fell into this trap he said mm. that his daughter had found other nanny jobs including one while traveling in turkey um through craigslist and it had positive experiences so everything leading up I, to this i literally has, did that yeah. i literally found a craigslist job yeah. nanny in turkey once yeah so she's <laughs> used this before not only here in Minnesota, but she's used it abroad and had no reason not to feel comfortable finding work mm -hmm. this way. Mm -hmm. um, her father described her as a warm, outgoing, larger-than-life person who loved theater. He said his daughter had traveled around much of the world, including Egypt and Argentina, where she worked as a juggler for a circus. <laughs> what? <laughs> yeah. She was, like, the <gasps> coolest person ever. Cool. She was multi-talented. Yeah. Yep. Um, quote, she was zany, quirky, brilliant, funny, maddening, and a total chaotic mess. You could follow her track through the house by this exuberant mess she left behind. She was just so funny. That was a quote from her mom, Nancy Olson. Oh. Which, like, you're basically describing any of the three of us, mostly yeah. me, but, you know. Amanda. Yeah. <laughs> um, in October of 2007, Catherine responded to an ad for a nanny gig on Craigslist that was located in Savage, Minnesota. <gasps> That's where my mom lives. I know. <gasps> I know. And for those of you who don't know anything about the geography of Minnesota, Savage is a suburb that's about like an hour southwest of Minneapolis. It's also not a Native American slur. It's named after a guy whose last name was Savage because I had to look it up because I was, like, really worried. We have a lot of very questionable towns. <clears throat> Coon Rapids. Yeah. Yeah. So. But this just... one, it's, like, named after, like, John Savage or something. Mm -hmm. um, who probably did, Dan like, commit Savage. atrocities, but whatever. It's named after um, Dan Savage. Let's just go <laughs> with that. 
Uh, so with the promise of an interview, she made her way to the home of 19-year-old Michael John Anderson. Uh-oh. Anderson had been posing as a married woman named Amy who was looking for nanny services. Anderson exchanged emails with Olsen over the course of several days, um, and Catherine headed out there to finally meet and uh, presumably try to apply for this job, but yeah. Catherine would not be seen alive again. Oh. oh. Her purse was found in a trash can in a park in Savage later that day. Police later found a trash bag in the trash can, and inside was a blood-soaked towel. Um, so she had arrived at Michael Anderson's parents' house. It's where he lived, but he was only 19, so he wasn't living alone out in Savage. Whoa. This she had dude arrived was there 19, 19 and running this fucking murderous con. Yep. God. And when she arrived at his house for an interview, he shot her in the back with a three fifty seven Magnum and put her body into the trunk of her own car. For God's he then sake. drove the car to Burnsville Nature Preserve where he abandoned it and left oh her there. Oh, my God. Yep. What Anderson, was he after? Just the thrill of killing someone? Well, kind of, actually, yeah. I mean, we're going to get to that. But okay. um, Anderson, who was apparently the first murderer referred to by the media as a Craigslist killer, was found guilty in first of first-degree murder and received a life sentence without parole on April 1st of 2009 um, in a trial that only lasted about a week. Her murder drew international attention as it was the first known homicide linked to Craigslist, sounding an alarm of the dangers of the Internet. Mm. I didn't know that this was the first Craigslist killer. It was in Savage, Minnesota. Jeez. Yeah, apparently it was the first to be referred to as the Craigslist killer. Might not have actually mm -hmm. been the first Craigslist killer. Right. Because I think but what that... was going on in Boston was happening before this, but he hadn't been labeled the Craigslist killer until mm -hmm. much in later in his crime spree. Yeah. The alliteration okay. hadn't caught on yet. Exactly. So mm -hmm. thanks, Minnesota. Mm hmm. Um,. Quote, Mr. Anderson is not just a murderer. He is a thief of the future of our family's joy, said the Reverend Rolf Olson. Oh, he needs yeah. to be prevented from inflicting evil on anybody else's life ever again. Totally agree. Completely mm -hmm. agree. Mm -hmm. um, the Lutheran pastor said he believes God will help him forgive Anderson. But, quote, in this situation, I don't sense that there is any hurry, which I felt like was yeah. such a Minnesotan quote. Yeah. Take your time. Oh, he's such a Lutheran pastor. I know. Like such a Lutheran quote. I love that. Um, yeah. I know it's really sad. But I'll that, forgive like, really him, but me. but I'm not, not in, in any, any hurry. hurry. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna put away some coffee and bars for you know ten or fifteen years first, and then we'll yeah. talk. <laughs> yeah. Um, County Attorney Patrick Silberto or Siliberto said that the case touched him, and that the story of a young woman lured by a fake internet ad for a babysitter is a warning to all of us. Mm -hmm. Quote: As much of a good force that the internet is, it's also a force for evil. Which you know. Mm -hmm. Is obviously true. There's like the deep mm -hmm. web and all kinds of shady shit. And there's so much anonymity that mm -hmm. it's really yeah. hard to know what's going on. Um, Prosecutor said during the week long trial that Anderson of Savage ran a phony ad on the Craigslist classified ad website in order to lure a woman to his home so he might, quote, experience what it felt like to kill. Oh my God. Fuck off. Yep. Sounds like and that motherfucker who murdered the woman in Ames like two yeah. days ago. Did you guys hear about that? I've no. Oh, two days ago? No, I didn't hear about that. Uh, she was a Iowa State student. She was a phenomenal golfer. She was like nationally ranked. Um, and I think she was just out playing golf. And there was a guy who is, uh, as far as we know right now, at the time of this recording, uh, was homeless and living in a homeless camp nearby. And he had told one of his friends like two days before that he just had these urges to rape and kill a woman. Oh, no. And then he at least Report assaulted that. and killed her. Yeah, like two while days she, later. Like while she was just golfing, he just like rocked yep. up and. She was doing oh, what God. she does in the light of day. And mm -hmm. he. I mean, again, this just happened, so, like, facts are still coming out. I'm sure we'll know more by the time this airs, but, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, stabbed her in the head and the neck and and killed her and put her body in one of the ponds, like, in the oh, on the golf course. Poor thing. Because oh he had an urge. Mm -hmm. He's 22 well, years right. old. Don't worry. We'll have opportunities to get more angry as I complete this. Great. Mm. This I'm already good. fired up. 
Mm-hmm. Good. Um, in closing arguments, prosecutors said Anderson's acts were premeditated, which I agree, obviously. He literally corresponded with someone for days and then got her to come yeah. to his house so we could he kill her. He posed as someone named Amy with yep. fake children Can't that get needed much more a babysitter. Than that. Um, Chief Deputy Scott County Attorney Ron Hosevar told the jury Anderson simply wanted to kill someone on October 25th, 2007. Simply. Cody brought her over because he wanted to know what it felt like. Well, he did. Mm-hmm. So here's where I get really pissed off, and I know that you all will too. Defense attorney Alan Margulies, fucking uh-huh. Alan, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. argued that Anderson, who didn't testify during the week-long trial, lured Olsen over with no clear idea why. He said that ah. when she tried to leave, Anderson, who had no experience with women, fell back I'm on what? his video game experience and pulled his father's gun on her. What? He said Anderson shot her accidentally when he tripped or flinched. Had no experience with women, so he so, like accidentally killed one. No, what he was, uh, what he's was alluding to, to is that she was saying no to whatever he wanted to do, so he pulled a gun on her. Right, right, and that that and, is and a defense that in court fine. for 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 whatever the fuck he did. That that it's, that's a viable defense. Like that, women well, are like some this sort woman of bobcat. said no. Yeah, I don't know how that to handle her. Most not even like patriarchy. a woman says no, so I draw a gun on her. Right. It's not a viable defense in court. And no. he's act this. I mean, I like I saw red when I read that. I was like, are you? He's also me? trying to infantilize in order to defend mm-hmm. this guy who's technically an adult, but he's a white man, so they can never be you know held accountable for their actions. Right. So he fell back on his video gaming experience because he was exactly. naive with women. And he then sh- he lured he- and killed a woman. Yeah. And then even after laying that kind of like foundation for his defense, in his in the next breath he says that he asked jurors to consider that Anderson lives in an unreal world uh, where Basically, like, he must be unhinged because he's trying to tell a woman at gunpoint that he wants to be her boyfriend. Like, who does Well, that? I'm sure he's unhinged, but yeah. it's not a defense. No. Um, and, like, was he demanding sex? We don't know. All we know is that this is a bizarre kid with no social skills. After the verdict, Margulies said his case was hindered by the judge's refusal to allow him to, sc- to discuss Anderson's Asperger's syndrome in court. Um, and for folks who may not know, I'm obviously not an expert, but Asperger's falls, it's a condition that falls on the autism spectrum. It's often characterized by difficulties with social interaction. Mm-hmm. Um, but, but there can be the, a wide range within Asperger's absolutely. On, in terms of and like the state of Minnesota does not, it's harder for, I'm trying to figure out the best way to word this. In the state of Minnesota, it can be harder for some mental health defenses to be entered into court because they're not necessarily a viable defense for something like this. Like Mm -hmm. just because you have Asperger's people with Asperger's are not violent criminals. Like that's not how Mm -hmm. this works. It doesn't provide enough to be a solid defense. Excuse this behavior. And the judge ruled before the trial that there was insufficient evidence that the disorder had anything to do with Olson's death. And there are more precautions in place to in the state of Minnesota actually protect people with diagnosed mental health issues. Mm -hmm. Um, from basically like, well, they they have Asperger's, so that's their defense. Like, you know what I mean? That's not. That's yeah. not good enough. Yeah, it's not no. good enough. No, I there did not say that eloquently with, at we, all. But we know people with Asperger's who are like loving, devoted, like family men with yeah. children and jobs. Like, mm-hmm. it's that's such a fucking bogus, ridiculous defense. And I, obviously, the world of mental illness is so vast that you can't just oh, well, you know, this person has some evidence of bipolar. They must have committed this crime. Like, that's not right. how that works. That's that's not right. at all how that works. Um, so that uh, the judge was like, okay, well, fuck that. This is not, there's way too much else here to show that this person knew exactly what they were doing and went through, like, painstaking, you know, <laughs> effort. steps to get, yeah. yeah, effort to get this person here. Um, Catfish someone. Anderson declined to comment during or after the sentencing um, and never testified, never went on the stand in court. Um, His lawyer, Margulies, conveyed on Anderson's behalf his, quote, deepest regrets for his actions. That's it. Mm -hmm. No statement, Mm -hmm. never apologized to the family, nothing, even after conviction. Mm -hmm. 
Um, so District Judge Mary Thiessen asks, like, why did you do this? You're the only one who knows, and I won't pretend to understand it. She added that Anderson was a coward when, she, when he shot Olsen, who Thiessen believed was running for her life, which is how she got shot in the back. Mm. Yeah. Um, you have shown no remorse, and I have no empathy for you, Thiessen said before handing down the life sentence. She also ordered Anderson pay restitution of $6,500 from his prison rages, wages to reimburse Olson's family for her funeral expenses, which, like, uh, as we know, you'll be working for 20 years to make 6500 bucks in prison. Right. So good luck with that. Um, Sarah Richter, Olson's older sister, said her sleep is interrupted nightly by horrible images from the murder. I'm haunted by uh. Anderson's face, by Catherine's screams, the gun, her body in the trunk, and now the real bloody images of my sister. She said, will I ever sleep again? The poor thing. Oh, oh my God. So this is about 11 years ago. There was a recent, or not a recent, but a year ago, they Care 11 did like a 10 years after how, you know, mm-hmm. how are they doing? And the family is doing well. And shortly mm-hmm. after Catherine was killed, they started a uh, scholarship fund in her name at St. Mm-hmm. Olaf. And uh-huh. over the years since this fund started, it's received and like given to incoming students over $160,000. Wow, that's nice. awesome. Isn't that amazing? And it's still going today. So you can still apply if you are, I mean, I don't know how many of our listeners are in Minnesota and like applying for colleges, but if you're applying to St. Olaf, <laughs> you can apply yeah. for this scholarship and this grant that's got done through, um, Cat through St. Olaf. I'm pretty sure it's called the Catherine Ann Olson Memorial Scholarship. So check mm. it out. Wow. Oh Isn't my that God. crazy what? though? What yeah. a fucker. What a fucker. Fucker. I know, and I'm so I'm so angry over that quote unquote defense of Oh, that well, defense was he has so Asperger's we figured it out. He has Asperger's and a woman said no to him, so don't give so him So he's allowed don't to give get him a, a life sentence. Shooter. Yeah. Don't don't give him a life sentence because this wasn't premeditated and he didn't know what he was doing. Yeah, fuck it. He had that. a promising video game career ahead of him. Oh my god. Cool. Don't even get me started on the video game game bullshit. <sighs> Uh, yeah. She makes me so mad. All well, right. Anyway, um, on the Teaser Tuesday post about this episode, Virginia Avila posted, if this is Craigslist crimes, not just murders, and no one brings up the Tesla pooper, I will literally, <laughs> and, so, and someone brings up the Tesla pooper, I will literally give you guys a $50 <laughs> Patreon donation to listen to a dramatic reading of this guy's Craigslist post. What and she so literally gave us a $50 Patreon donation. I yep. got the So email here alert. you go, Virginia. Here is your dramatic reading. Oh, no. <laughs> Who pooped <laughs> on the Chicago man's Tesla? <laughs> <laughs> Need help from people of Lakeview, parentheses, reward. <laughs> I am writing this message to anyone that might have been in Lakeview Thursday night around 9 p.m. Specifically, I am looking for anyone who is by Stratford and Broadway, which was where my car was parked. <laughs> Obviously, I have a large degree of humility when writing this because I am seeking people out here to see if anyone has any information about who may have taken a gigantic shit on the windshield <laughs> of my brand new Tesla Model oh, X. Oh, no. This is not a joke. I was on a date with a girl, one who was very conservative. It was our third date. And when we walked out, sure enough, we saw that someone had taken a very large shit on my windshield comprised of two sizable logs and a smaller (laughs) ball, which rolled down to my wipers. Oh, my God. (laughs) Wipers. What? P was not visible, leading me to believe that perhaps someone had shit in a container at home and then threw it on my car later. Oh. Now I know a lot of people might find this funny, but my date was really traumatized by the whole thing, (laughs) and I have zero leads. (laughs) (laughs) I would have died laughing and then married that man with that Tesla. Oh, yeah. What's more, the the CPD absolutely refused to help me. A tax-paying citizen cleaned the shit off of my car. (laughs) But they obviously didn't hesitate to tell me I could not drive with the poop on my windshield because it would obstruct my visibility. I had to use (laughs) a red-eye magazine and a bottle of water to clean it off, and that sucked. (laughs) You rich (laughs) fuck. I am looking for solid intelligence in regards to anyone who might have seen anything. Solid. (laughs) 
Do not liquid intelligence, solid intelligence. Two do logs not reply. worth of intelligence. <laughs> do not reply with the car type you think you saw or a suggestion. I am writing this to someone who saw something in particular or perhaps someone who indeed knows the person who pulled this stupid joke on me. As for the latter, if you were willing to, to leak the name of the person who did this, I <laughs> promise you that I will spare you of all legal charges and physical retaliation. However, I will squeeze you for more. I will plan on ruling you out ruling you out with DNA, for I have kept a sample of the shit, for I can see someone trying to pull another fast one on me, and trust me, this is not going to happen. Uh-huh. <laughs> Taking dumps on a person's car is something children do, not adults. And although from do time to time children do that. that. <laughs> I don't think children do that. And although from time to time I can see why someone deserves it. <laughs> <laughs> this was absolutely uncalled for, and I think it says a lot about the people of Lakeview and those that work at The Rocks, which must be some restaurant that they were at. Parentheses, the staff there laughed at me when I told them what happened. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you are all pieces of shit for watching this happen and doing pieces nothing. Pieces of shit! Yep. Probably watching there as some jerk tossed a giant shit on my windshield, or perhaps you even saw it drop from his or her butthole as the pee was collected <laughs> separately, which still makes sense, so they wouldn't slip on the pee after it was all said and done. Oh this person seems really to know too it much. Through. Yeah, maybe you shit on your own Tesla. Do you pee every time you poop? A little not bit. Not necessarily, I think so. but yeah, not, I don't think they are. Ne- they're not uh, mutually exclusive. It's pretty. You're most times though. Yeah. Okay. I think, this is, yeah. 99% this is of the time. Over. Listen closely. I am offering a significant <laughs> compensation to anyone who has good, solid intelligence that I will handle in my <laughs> own way. I'm not going to mention dollar amounts here, but I work in the medical community and trust me when I say I think the I amount I have Tesla. in mind will not disappoint. After all, I do own a Tesla. Stop getting <gasps> ahead of me, Kenyon. Oh, God. I was joking. <laughs> I was joking. This guy is You called it. You fucking called it. We were all thinking it. Lastly, a message to the person who did this. I will find you. Do you understand me? I have already had my lawyer draft up subpoenas to acquire footage from nearby security cameras, amongst other things. (laughs) Personally, I think you need medical attention to do what you've done. I am so greatly saddened this city has been overrun by things and by th- by thugs and poor people. Oh, here we go. Uh-oh. Who are having too many children. I cannot <gasps> be surprised that Donald Trump is doing so well when I see my car had someone shit or toss <laughs> shit on it in clear view oh of the public. My God. And maybe he should be doing well if he is better suited at taking on the maniacs who have been overrunning this once great city. Good intel on who did this good money. Do you think he has a Donald Trump bumper sticker on his fucking Tesla? Probably. That's why I shit on his Tesla. Yep. (laughs) Good intel on who did this good money. I'll end on that. Michael. Fuck you, Michael. Michael. You deserve it. Fuck you, Michael. Sorry I'm poor. That doesn't mean I want to shit on your... What makes you think it's a poor person? You're obviously having dinner... In like a wealthy area at a fancy restaurant, what makes you assume that it was a poor person that shat on your Tesla? I'm guessing this guy was targeted. He probably made some asshole comment to somebody and that person was like, yep, I'm a dump on your Tesla. He probably like didn't tip at all on his date with his conservative girlfriend, which... I'm guessing exactly. it was the third date. It wasn't going well. She wasn't going to have sex with you. So you assume she was conservative. Something like that. I'm just, I'm just inferring a lot of information. and putting I know, a lot but on this, this poor person man. is bonkers. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, that thank was you for that. that. Yeah. 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 Snaps. Crazy. Um, special thanks this week. To Michael, the Tesla owner. Um, <laughs> Craig S. List. Craig S. <laughs> List. And also to Raylan Shoup for yes. uh, donating on Patreon and uh, selecting this week's episode topic and also my case. You Seriously, Raylan. crushed it. Also, many thanks to Ryan Howell. My husband and I gave money to Colin Powell, Ryan Howell. (laughs) Thank you for your $5 donation. Yes. Also, thank you to Tiffany Carlson, Tiffany of 
Oh, Mickey, you so fine. You so fine. You so fine. You blow my name. Tiffany. Thank you, Tiffany. Thank you, Tiffany. (laughs) Shout out to the Murder in My Family podcast. What up? Thank you. Podcasts helping podcasts. Oh my God, I just Googled it. That was Tony Basil, not Tiffany. Well, whatever. You blew it. You blew it. I really did. Yeah, I Um, didn't understand. Also, special thanks to Bradley Morris. We want Morris of your love, but this mm. is a great place to start. <laughs> uh, thank you to Samantha Lo Piccolo. Oh, yes. I like the piccolo. Un cappuccino di piccolo. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, That's what all the, the Italian that I know. <laughs> grazie. Uh, me. Grazie mille. Um, Pizza. Thank you. T- <laughs> Thank you to <laughs> Hillary Hastings. We are hasty to get to know you, Hillary. Oh, Ooh. and Virginia Holder. I want a holder and I want to squeeze her, says no one ever because women's bodies are not your playthings. <laughs> <laughs> Thank Love you for it. your $5 donation. <laughs> oh this has God. been a PSA. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Uh, thank you to Nick Brown. Nick. You did it. You did it. You shit on the Tesla. You put some yep. hot brown yeah. on that Tesla. <laughs> Nick Brown went down to Brown Town. Down to Brown Town. Shit on that Tesla. Love it. Knew it. Uh, You're done good. <laughs> Shout out to Nicole Grovna. And Nicole sent a pronunciation guide and also said that she was British. So, hello, Grovna. Grovna. <laughs> oh, Grovna. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, good day, Nico Grovner. Michael Nico. K. <laughs> Michael K. <laughs> the rain and Spain stays mainly, mainly in, in the, the plain. You kings of New England. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay, okay. Also, thanks to Maureen Aldrich. Did you know that there is a street in Minneapolis, very close to my street, I, called Aldrich. I grew up on Aldrich Avenue South. Yep, yep. And Love you it. have increased your donation from $2 to $5 a month, and we can't thank you enough. I love when people increase. It's so sweet. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. easy. Yes. Mm-hmm. Big thank you also to a fellow increaser, Karen Girdler. Gird oh, your loins. Gird your loins. My stomach is girdling. <laughs> because i'm hungry (laughs) and we're so thankful to you thank you thank thank you to tucker rossman also a fellow increaser and we are tuckered out doing special things (laughs) true true that brooke williams is kicking off our ten dollar a month portion you will be getting a fucking patriarchy wine glass in the mail at some point in your future. And thank you so much for your $10 donation. Yes. Will, I am so thankful for you. You babbling brook. Mm. <laughs> Lauren Wells also getting a fucking patriarchy wine glass for donating $10 a month. Lauren, you are doing so wells. Thank oh. you so much. Orson Wells. <laughs> speaking, speaking of Austin Wells, <laughs> uh, for the excellence. bottles. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Christy Lau. Hello, Christy Ooh, Lau. Oh, the French <laughs> champagne. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that it? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yep. Heidi Muller. <laughs> Let me Muller this over for a minute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love you. Thank you so much for your $10 a month donation. Indict. <laughs> oh, yeah. Do it. <laughs> Big thanks to Colleen Gravem. Gravem. Mm. Hardly know him. <laughs> <laughs> it you, works you grave for us everything. $10 a month. <laughs> you grave also us shout $10 out to- a month. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to Alexandria <laughs> Hickman. Uh, Hickman, hardly know him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you sure know how to Hickman. Mm-hmm. That was short for pick em. Oh, I like that. <laughs> uh, we've got 
friend slash couple goals up here, Jessamine Robinson and Jesse Doman. Yes. Doubling down to donate $10 a month collectively. Mm. I love that. Loving love the name Jessamine also. I know. Yeah. Friends cool who Patreon together stay together, in yes. my honest opinion. Mm-hmm. 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 Big thanks to Megan Chinworth. Uh, your chin is Take worth. Take one on the chin worth. <laughs> <laughs> your chin, your is, chin worth is worth a thousand ten times chins. your Patreon pledge <laughs> in gold. Shout Gilded. out to Rebecca S for super califragilistic expialidocious. Thank you. Ooh. That's bound to be what S stands for. It's gotta right? be. Yep. <laughs> Most logical explanation. Uh huh. Kimberly Nichols, you're not just giving us nickels. You're giving us $15 a <laughs> month, which means you are in the trash queen category. Yes. Also, a fellow trash queen, Asia Stark. Not to be confused with Arya Stark. I was just going to say. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Winter which is coming, is- Asia. <laughs> Winter is coming. Thank you for Shout- your $15 a month donation. Shout out to our very first $50 a month donor. Holy shikes. Melissa Walters, you will be receiving one of our firstborn children. Yes. Um, (laughs) And also (laughs) the opportunity to choose an episode topic and or case and or wine. Mm -hmm. And also probably you'll get a fucking patriarchy wine glass and And a tote tote bag. bag. And kind of just just let us know whatever you want and we'll make it happen. (laughs) And if you are like all of my exes and can't uh, commit to anything... Uh, <laughs> you can go to our online store, wine and crime podcast up big cartel.com and make once off donations in denominations that are a little more in your price range. So I am going to butcher this name. Sadie Helene Keese. Sade. Ba- Sa- Sade. Sade Helene Keese. Thank you for your $10 once off donation. You are amazing. I want to kiss you right on the <laughs> keister. <laughs> keister. <laughs> also a once-off donator, Caitlin Wong. You didn't go Wong when you donated $10 a month once-off to us. If that's Nothing Wong, wrong then I don't want to be right. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! Love it. Shout out to Jessica Beauchemin. Um, mm. You are fancy and French. And I want to make a bechamel Mm. and then drink it. Uh, Katie Gibson, thank you for having a name that is very easy for me to pronounce. I can't (laughs) thank you enough. And for your $25 once-off donation, you are a queen. Yes. Gibson. I hardly know him. Gibson hardly knows him. (laughs) (laughs) And last but not least, second to last but not second to least, Kit D. (laughs) Kitty. 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 For your twenty-five dollar <laughs> one soft donation, I'm gonna give you a little temptations treat. Oh, Kiss you on your oh little my. pink nose, kitty. Oh kitty. God. <laughs> okay. This is escalating quickly. And of course, special <laughs> thanks to our sponsor, Talkspace, which I especially need after hearing Lucy's kitty voice. Kitty. Um, kitty. For forty-five dollars off your first month, go to talkspace.com forward slash gals treat your brain. Treat, treat your kitties. It. Treat your kitties. <laughs> I Bye. hate you. <laughs> Bye. Thanks for listening to Wine and Crime. Our cover art is by Kala Yip. Music by Phil Young and Corey Wendell. Check out our website and blog at wineandcrimepodcast.com. You can also follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Wine and Crime Pod. If you have wine recommendations or creepy true crime stories to share, email us at wineandcrimepodcast at gmail.com. Episodes are available on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Google Play, basically wherever you get your podcasts. More importantly, if you like the show, please rate, review, and subscribe on Apple Podcasts. It really is the best way to spread the word. We are a totally independent show, so if you'd like to support us and get a shout-out on air... Visit our Patreon page to keep this podcast and the wine flowing. Cheers! 
Hi, Wine and Crime listeners. I'm Lindsay K. Tai. And I'm Kelly Nugent. And we're the hosts of Teen Creeps, a podcast where we review YA pulp fiction by Christopher Pike, R.L. Stein, V.C. Andrews, Lois Duncan, Caroline B. Cooney, and more. We have over a hundred episodes for you to wrap your cute little ears around. If you like Wine and Crime's cheeky conversations, you'll probably like us too. No guarantee, but you know, probably. We talk about going into murder packs with your crush, Problematic red herrings. Murder at school plays. Doing spells on graves while throwing jazz hands. And bitches trying to possess your body in time for prom. But we also get into feminist commentary, teenage angst, and all sorts of down and dirty personal stuff. So give us a listen. We're on the Forever Dog Podcast Network. And you can find us on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, or wherever the hell you usually listen. Thanks for your time. And keep it creepy.